Odian, and um, he appreciated the EFF's offer uh, and said that um, it shouldn't be very difficult for them to come back to us with a, a clear, definite answer. So after the NEC, I'm going to have a meeting again with the president to have a final detail of what is the agreement. Um, and we see that as a, a role that we're elected to play. Uh, we're not elected to be government. That's why we don't have a majority. But if we play any role in um, parliament, that's what we're elected to do. We are members of parliament. We can be chairpersons of parliament. We can be uh, uh, speaker of parliament. It's a responsibility which the electorate said, go and execute. Uh, so playing an oversight will not necessarily only mean that you must be in opposition and without any single position in the legislature or parliament. We remain in opposition in positions of committees, in positions of deputy speaker or a speaker. And that even makes that committee to be more effective because departments are no longer going to go there knowing very well that they're going to enjoy the protection of the chairperson. So that will give the EFF the most efficient and effective way of holding the executive uh, accountable. And that's why we think there is no contradiction in doing that. The interpretation I've given to you, uh, it's a plan B. The first plan was to buy South Africa through the funding of political parties. That's why there is a party change uh, which was given more than 30 million. It ended up not participating in the election. Then Rise Muzanzi and all kinds of political parties given huge millions. And what did South Africans do? Rejected those millions. So this answers the same question. What are you saying about the future funding by these institutions which have got control over the research institute, which have got control over the media? South Africans are going to become more and more wiser. And they've demonstrated during these elections that they cannot be bought. Uh, they rejected millions. The Oppenheimers were dishing out money unashamedly. When we say Oppenheimers, we mean all of those people. Oppenheimer is a representative of those multimillionaire families of the Rupert and the Minels and all of them who have been pumping money to try and manipulate the political landscape in South Africa, and that has successfully failed. So what do we do? We retreat back to our traditional political parties and then unite them. The IFP is not an organization outside the open Oppenheimers. It was formed by them. Who in his rightful mind will give Clavisa 20 million? Because he can't even speak to that 20 million himself. So why would someone say, yes, 20 million to Clavisa? To do what with it? Clavisa was given 20 million and then he was pushed out of the campaign. The campaign was run by the chairperson and the premier candidate of the IFP in KZN. I found Travisa campaigning in Malamulen. I'm like, what is he doing in Malamulen? That's how much he was pushed out of the campaign. But the money was put inside the IFP because the IFP is an is a entity of the Oppenheimer family. You have all seen at the uh, Prince Mango Suti Buteles' funeral where no less than four members of the Oppenheimer family are in attendance. There is a video of them greeting President Ramaphosa at President, I mean, Prince Mango Sutubu Teles' funeral. The Oppenheimers did not go to Mandela's family. They were not a factor in Mandela's family, a funeral. The Oppenheimers did not go to Obama's lecture in Johannesburg about Mandela, that memorial, what, what. They were not playing any role. But in the <coughs> Prince Mango Sutu Butele's funeral, they played a prominent role. Why? The Open IMS wanted Prince Mango Sutu Butele to be the first black president of South Africa. They never believed in the ANC and Nelson Mandela. That's why when Nelson Mandela's first meetings outside South Africa, he was asked by Britain as to what is going to be the role of Prince Mango Sutu Butele in your cabinet when you win the elections. So Prince Mango Sutubu Telezi and the IFP have always been the project of uh, the Oppenheimer family. The DA, it goes without saying. They control it. Now they've got hold on the president of the ANC, and the situation demands that they must all come together. 
The DA complained, I've been supported the uh, impeachment of the president. The DA complained about Paul Mashatile. The DA complained about all the corrupt people. All of a sudden, they've got nothing to say about those people. That is the, a, an indication that someone came to take out the brain and said, we're moving in this direction and we don't want to be questioned. Why would all of a sudden the DA see holy and good leadership in the ANC when they've not throughout the years? It's because when the numbers put together, the open eye must see that they will still continue to be in charge. So the ANC played with an opportunity to isolate imperialist forces and the white monopoly capital in South Africa. This was an opportune moment for progressive political formations to come together. The president says to me, we cannot form the GNU without a DA because we want a non-racial GNU. I asked him a question. Are you saying the ANC is not a non-racial organization? Because the ANC is a non-racial organization without the DA. So why would it, say when it comes to government, if there's no DA, we are not non-racial? But when they run their daily activities, including in their constitution, they are non-racial. I said to the president, there are white people in the ANC, in the EFF, in all the progressive formations, white people are found there. If it's about the question of non-racialism, we can still find white people from amongst ourselves. It's not the question of non-racialism. We are not opposed to white people. We are opposed to white supremacy. We are opposed to racism. We are opposed to Africanerdom. We are opposed to white monopoly capital. Any other progressive name that gets to be put forward by the president of a white person, Indian person, colored person, African person, as long as that is a progressive name, will support it. I said to the president, we voted for the DA in 2016, where uh, you, comrades, were arrogantly defying and denying us an opportunity to work together in 2016. We said to you, let's work together. You said, no, we don't want to work with you in the arrogant manner you are doing. What did we do? We pulled out where the DA was defeating you. We folded our hands. And I said to him, to show you it's not a question of race, and don't leave here saying I'm anti-white people. In 2016, we refused to participate in municipalities with the DA led by a black person. It was led by my money. In Joburg, it was led by Mashaba. We still said, we don't care who are the faces. This organization is a tool for imperialism and for white monopoly capital. So it's not about color. It's about the party that represents backwardness, a party that is a racist organization, a party like Freedom Front that says part of its conditions to go into a coalition is that we must declare Orania as an, a white African land. And you say to us, we must go and participate in such a coalition. We'll never do that. Remember when you are in cabinet, once you are defeated in argument, those decisions are binding on you. As a disciplined member of cabinet, you must go and defend that Orania must be a land of the Africaners. We will not do that. We will rather die without occupying positions in government than to allow white supremacists and racists to thrive. Fighters, inclusive government should not mean a compromise on the principle. We are for inclusive government. That's why we said to the, we are the first political party to say to the ANC, we will work with you. But because we understood the element of inclusive government and government of national unity. But it does not mean we must sleep with Zionist with our eyes open. We're not going to do that. We said to the people of Palestine, we said to the Muslim communities everywhere in South Africa, the vote and the victory of the EFF is a victory of the people of Palestine. Those Muslims who voted for the EFF, 
those Muslims who have voted uh, for, for the ANC, what are you saying to them when you go immediately in bed with the people who have supported a genocide, the killing of innocent women and children, and we must close our eyes in the name of inclusive government and overlook humanity, we will not do that uh, as the EFF. President Ramaphosa has always been a project of these people. From school, he went straight to work for Urban Foundation, to work for the Oppenheimers. President Ramaphosa formed the NUM. He has never been a mine worker. He has never been underground. From school straight, he was given money uh, with other colleagues to form an NUM. That was funded directly by the Oppenheimers. How does NUM, which had a policy conference over the weekend, sing a song, Seven Zaganzima, uh, we're not being paid money, we're paid peanuts. And then one of the people who joins them in singing that song is uh, Praveen Gordon. They even get addressed by Praveen Gordon, who's in cahoots with these minds that are exploiting. The mine workers. That's a huge contradiction. It can it, it can clearly indicate to you that these people do not mean anything uh, they are saying. So uh, this is the end of the ANC. It is not of our own making. The ANC is not dying because the EFF is growing. The ANC is dying a natural death. With or without Zuma, the projections were the way they are now. Before the formation of MKP, the research showed that the ANC is going to go below 50%. And Mbalula pulled it below 30%. At some point on the board, it went below 40% for real. So, it, it, this is the end of it. Because you cannot say you want to change the property relations and you engage in the struggle for land and then you go into cahoots with the people who are actually opposed to that struggle for the land. So, South Africans, there is a story being peddled that we are a flip-floppers because in 2016 we worked with DA and today we say we can't work with DA. Let's put it on record, lazy readers and lazy thinkers and people with a memory of a chicken, go and check those facts. We have never worked with the DA. We said we are going to fold our arms because the ANC was arrogantly engaging us. We folded our arms and the DA dealt with them. And today you want to now turn the whole thing and say the EFF worked with the DA. We never worked with the DA. We never had an MMC under the DA government. We never had a speaker under the DA government, we never asked this, that which we are asking from the ANC, from the DA. This is an opportunity for progressive forces to align. When we say progressive forces, the people say you are saying black parties. There are no black parties. We are not a black party. We are a progressive force of the left. We are saying the progressive forces must align. I told the president very clearly that maybe sometimes this thing rings nicely in your ear when the DA says we'll work only with the ANC of Ramaphosa. It's not true. The ANC of Ramaphosa lost in Twani, in Jobek, in uh, Tequini, in uh, uh, Ikruleni, and PE. Why didn't the DA offer the president was what he is offering them now? Why didn't the DA say there is no outright winner. Come ANC of Ramaphosa. Let's work together in turn. If this situation were in now, was the DA in this situation with 40% and Freedom Front with 11% and ACDP with 5%, we're not going to be talking these things we're talking. They would have united and isolated all the progressive forces. And I'm not speculating. I'm telling you facts. Go and check in Tswani, where the DA has got no outright majority, did it invite the ANC 
of Ramaphosa because they can only work with the ANC of Ramaphosa. The ANC is under Ramaphosa now in Tswani, in Jobek, in, 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 in Ikurulain. Why is the DA not inviting him? It is because Ramaphosa suffers from inferiority. He cannot work without white supervision. To invite the DA is to invite supervisors. It's not to invite progressive white people to come and join hands with us to rebuild South Africa. So we reject this government with everything it deserves for as long as it puts in white supremacists, it puts in Afrikanerdom, it puts in colonialism and imperialism will not be part of the new colonial government. Comrades and everybody else who seek to persuade us otherwise, we are making a plea, leave us alone. If this is our natural death, let us die with our boots on. Thank you, President. We're going to do another round, and hopefully it's the last round. EWN sitting right here in the front. One, two, three, Sunday World, four, Kaya, I saw you five, newsroom, six with the overall, the red, no, it's not quite the red overall, number six. Number one. I'm Tavis Okoba from Eyewitness News. Um, I know, Mr. Malema, you addressed that um, the ANC should stop purging uh, your MMCs in, the, in some municipalities. I just want to know what is the future of your provincial Gauteng chairperson, Kululego Dunga? Um, is he going to remain in the Guru Lady? Or is he going to uh, go back to the, uh, or, or is he going to go to the provincial legislature? Thank you. Uh, good evening, Paul Vecchiato from uh, Bloomberg. Um, if your your suggestion of taking up certain positions by party members in the legislature isn't met. Will you be prepared to looking at doing something of forming an opposition party alliance, for want of a better term, um, uh, against the ANC slash DA um, government, so, and with the EFF becoming the uh, leader of that opposition uh, block or alliance? Thank you. Number three. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mawande. I work for the Sunday World. Mr. Malima, as it relates to, to, to the uh, purging, as you put it, of the EFF MMCs, as we saw in Negorulene yesterday, and there's already a talk that the ANC has taken a decision uh, that it will uh, divorce the EFF in Negorulene as well as Johannesburg. And, and uh, in line with what you are saying, that you've requested uh, that that uh, be put to a stop. If that doesn't happen, what is the strategy of the EFF as it relates to that? And also, uh, in Gauteng as well, is the EFF willing to support uh, Mr. Panyana Zorosufi to return as the Premier of Gauteng? We saw that he's uh, been shortlisted as the Premier candidate of the ANC in that province. Uh, since you've been working well with the ANC under Mr. Lusufi in that particular province of Gauteng. Uh, about KZN, you say that you will support uh, the MKP to, to govern in that province because they got majority of the votes. Uh, the question then becomes, is it an informal support or do you have a formal agreement with the MK party? And if you do have a formal agreement, what are the details of that agreement? Do you share the executive or do you want to participate in the provincial legislature? Thank you very much. Number four was next, Kaya. Good evening, Mr. Malema Katleo Sohoto from Kaya 959. Um, just your sense on what you make of some of the MK internal leadership challenges, especially as we've seen um, the expelled member, Mr. Jabulani Kumalo, losing his court bids. In your talks with the party, uh, the weight of those internal challenges, how does it affect those possible conversations that you're having with them? And then number five is all the way over here.
Uh, evening, it's Zianda Ngobo from Newsroom Africa. My question is similar to that of Bloomberg's. If the ANC then rejects uh, this proposal that you put on the table with the president today, what does that mean in terms of your ability to plan for 2026 local government elections? Would it also mean that you would have overplayed your hand um, if, if some of your, your constituency believes that you may have not actually put the best uh, offer on the table and, 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 and linked to what you've touched on briefly, Mr. Malema, when it comes to the prospects of growth for the organization? Thank you. And number six, just behind. Hi, my name is Bulelani from SABC, also just linked to what Paul has asked. Um, if your demand for the position of speaker and deputy speaker is not met by the ANC, will you be posting a presidential candidate during the vote? And secondly, will you be actively uh, lobbying as some of the ANC MPs who are allegedly not in support of the ANC DA coalition to vote with your candidate? Thank you. President. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> the MMC of uh, EFF in Gurulen Dunga is going. To, is, he remains a councillor uh, of the EFF in uh, Gurulene, and uh, if we are not finding each other with the president, we are going to withdraw all our MMCs in all areas where we are participating with the ANC. So, uh, if by this evening. Dunga is not reappointed as the MMC of Finance. All our MMCs in Johannesburg, in uh, Mohali City, in PE, uh, in Nikurulene, all of them are going to step down. We're not scared of a fight. They want to bring it on, we're ready for it. And we're not disparate for positions, we have never been. Um, we are here to make a, a contribution. I just saw this as mudding the waters. Uh, during the most critical period where we have to find each other, a person goes and removes an MMC at night without uh, even engaging the leadership of uh, the EFF. We have had a very good working relationship with the leadership of the ANC uh, in Gaute. Uh, we have had direct communication with the chairperson of the ANC in Gaute and the secretary. But since the announcement that they are going to work with the DA, those guys have completely blocked us from any form of communication. So don't think you can threaten the EFF by taking away MMCs. We'll never be uh, shaken by such things. We are aware that they say they are going to unplug us. We cannot be unplugged by fools. We are going to withdraw ourselves. We are not desperate and we are going to remain. There is no Dunga who is going to any legislature. He's going to be a councillor and is going to fight from the opposition benches in the Ikurulene municipality. And the same goes for all of them. So the deputy president must start preparing resignation letters for all of them. Uh, that once I meet the president, they say it's not, they are not willing to accommodate it tonight, not tomorrow, tonight. Then we know the deal is off. And uh, we can as well just walk away. We're not like uh, Muzandile Masina who was disparate till now, bitter to the end, wanting to be a mayor at all costs. So we're not those kind of people who are here for position. South Africa, we have made contribution to the struggle of South Africa at an early age. And it doesn't mean we must exit through ministerial positions or anything. <coughs> we can exit at any time if the South Africans wish so. But you cannot do away with the kind of contribution we've made in the struggle for the total liberation of our people in South Africa. So be rest assured, we cannot be intimidated by positions. Positions are never anything. Listen to all these uh, ex-prisoners, gangsters, and all of them, how they negotiate. They tell you position from when they enter the gate. No principles, no nothing. The DA has got no principal agreements with the ANC. They have agreed on positions. They actually told him that we want one, two, three, four departments, and those departments must be exclusively for us, and you must not interfere. And he says he has refused. He said, no, 
We can agree on ministries as to which ones that should be left to the president. And there's no ministry that can be exclusively for white people uh, of the DA. Because cabinet ministry means a collective leadership. So it can be that there are certain departments which are not accountable uh, to the president. At least if he's honest by that, then we know that there's already a contestation. Right at the beginning, they can't find uh, one another. So uh, let's allow that process uh, to unfold. If the DA goes into government, and this must be known to all of you, if the DA goes into government, the official opposition is MKP. That's what you must know. That's how it works. There's no one who's going to be in government and still be an official opposition. And MKP and ourselves were together. We shall be official opposition together. We'll help each other in that role together. We are more experienced than them. We've been here. And we've got a cordial relationship with them. So even when we are chairpersons of the uh, committees or speakers, we remain opposition. It is allowed. They can't say you are now a chairperson of a committee, you can't be an opposition party. No. The IFP was the chairperson of uh, SCOPA, and it remained an opposition party. So our acceptance of this responsibility, if Veronica becomes a speaker, it doesn't mean anything about EFF being an opposition. It remains an opposition party opposed to the current government. Um... Well, well we, there is no need, really. We, the people of South Africa must swallow what they've decided to chew. And they decided to chew 40% of the ANC. So why should you fill their presidential candidate for what? That's what they said they want. Why do they go and make decisions and they hope someone is going to rescue them from the other side? It's their own decision. They, they chose Lord Shady. They chose Ramaphosa. They chose the highest level of unemployment. They chose racism. That's what they chose. So if the ANC fails to come together with progressive formations, we are prepared to sit back. But let's tell you, we'll fully participate in this parliament. And this time around, we have taken a decision not to play a role of a disruption of being robust, of engaging to a point where we follow up that which was rejected illegally in parliament through peaceful protest on the streets. You will never see us on the stage. You will never see us fighting with any bouncer, anything of that sort. We are here as a 10-year-old organization with mature parliamentary politics, well experienced to make sure that the views of those who voted for us are well represented. From now onwards, when you say there is a racist at our work, we check the historical tweeting of yours. <laughs> if you have been tweeting <laughs> ANC, ANC, DA, go and fight with those white people alone. We are now representing our own people who have been supporting us. Skatel, man. Skatel. We are with our people. And let me re reassure you, this party is going to grow. This deal is the best deal you can ever think of. We did this deal almost the same in 2016. What happened after 2016? We increased our votes in 2019. We moved from uh, 25 members of parliament to 45. 45. 44 members of parliament. So we have never engaged in a deal that is detriment to the growth of the EFF. We've always made calculations as to how do we grow our movement. So we are well within our right. We've not lost our support. The base that we started with in 2014 were not there. Anyone who says we are back there is not true. We are not in 2014. We have just lost some few seats and we are going to bounce back very strongly in 2026. And we're going to work in a focused manner. If you go and look at the list of the EFF now, in the legislatures, in the uh, national parliament, 
in the NCOP and look at where those people are coming from, we no longer put people who come from constituencies that don't vote for EFF. We are now choosing people who are choosing the EFF. We are a national organization. We'll find footprint everywhere. But we're not going to have, for instance, over-representation of people of KwaZulu-Natal in this parliament when they've not given us anything. They will get what is pro proportionate to what they gave us in these elections. And that applies to everyone. So we need to make sure that we all, if we need the assistance of the EFF, let's vote for the EFF. After the election, someone sends me a video of a, a community drinking water from a well. A well is like a hole. So they take water with a, a cup, put in a bucket, put in a bucket. They say, no, can you do a borehole for these people? Then he said, I said, that's fine, we'll do a borehole. Send me the VD results of that voting station. <laughs> and then they said, hey, so why are you sending me this? Go where you voted. You don't know where you voted. Where are you coming to me? So when a water comes from a well, it tells you that there's too much water underground. Even when you drill a bowl, you are not going to struggle. Yet an ANC councillor does not drill a bowl. The ANC municipality does not drill a bowl. The ANC government does not drill a bowl. The EFF must go and drill a bowl. No, we now know the VDs that have voted for the EFF. And those are the people who are going to service. It doesn't mean we can't grow our base into the other constituencies. But as a party, you need to have your priorities right. Otherwise, you are going to undermine your growth. You are going to invest your resources where there are no dividends. We need dividends now. Um, I'm, I'm really pleading, whether we like MKP or we don't like MKP, if you want peace, in KwaZulu Natal, which is not going to be instigated by MKP, which is not going to be instigated by EFF, that violence, the people are going to rise. If you go against the wish, you know, in KZN is worse. The MKP get 45%. The second party gets 18%. And you still think you can overlook that party. I told President Sir Ramaphosa, I said, your own rules on coalition say a party with the highest number must be the one that lead. Please allow MKP to lead. Do not undermine the, the voice of the people of KwaZulu-Natal if we respect democracy. And we make that plea that please allow MKP to lead in KwaZulu-Natal. We are not in any formal agreement with them. We are not for any cabinet position in KwaZulu-Natal. We are not for any speaker. We are not for anything. When we get invited, only then we look at what are the nitty-gritties of such an invitation. We have never had such a, a discussion with um, MKP. We are supporting MKP in KwaZulu-Natal from a principled point of view that says the party with the majority must be the one that lead. The DA, these hypocrites, have been advocating for that. When they've refused to give Action ACA mayorship, when they refused to give their partners mayorship, they always said, we are the one with the highest number, and therefore we can't give you the mayorship. What has changed in KwaZulu-Natal? Why is the DA not applying the same principle? Why is the ANC not applying the same principle? So, we are going to stick to this principle as the EFF. Be rest assured, uh, fellow South Africans, the MKP will overcome its internal leadership squabbles. It comes with the territory. There is no single organization that was formed and never faced leadership challenges. There was Mutle Tama here who had to run all over the streets of Cape Town being chased by Joseph but Bernard Joseph. <laughs> so what I say, we had our own share and look at us now. We are in a much more stable way. So we are really not bothered by some potential infiltration on the leadership of MKP. 
given President Zuma's experience and given uh, those guys that we're negotiating with, uh, Abu Natin Tleko, Abu uh, former SARS, uh, Tom Moyane, they are well experienced people. Surely they should be knowing how to deal with potential internal leadership uh, squabbles. As to what MKP stands for, what do they do and all of that, we are not the spokesperson of the MKP. Let them do whatever they want to do. The people chose them. And it's not only in KwaZulu Natal. It's in South Africa. That's why I say to you, if the DA goes into government, MKP is the official opposition. Therefore, you want official statement on any issue, you are going to have to drive to Nkandla, like you did, <laughs> to go and get official reaction of MKP because it looks like the headquarters is there. <laughs> so there's nothing we can do. The people of South Africa chose that. And all we can do as people who respect democratic principles is to stick to exactly that. So uh, the EFF is not in any formal agreement, is not getting any executive position uh, from MKP, and it hopes that MKP internal squabbles are just an irritation for a party that is new. So within a short space of time, we hope they will be able to overcome whatever difficulties they are confronted with. What we are interested in is to work with a solid party in the national parliament and in the legislature of KwaZulu Natal, in the legislature of Gaute. We, this part of engagement we are having with the ANC, the same principles applies everywhere. If they are going in bed with the DA in Gaute, they must not count us in. Banyaza and TK, through their rightful conscience, they got defeated here. They have been very clear of what needs to happen. But they are a provincial structure from a you know, fragmented organization, a highly divided organization. And if their voice is uh, uh, you know, overpowered, you, there's nothing you can do. By the way, the DA coalition failed in the NEC. They defeated the DA coalition in the NEC. This is what happens now, these days, how the ANC is run in a criminal mafia style. They allow people to speak, 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 speak. Then they say, let's agenda. The president is going to give a, a summary. Then what they do, they call you guys in. Then the president speaks in front of you. Those on the floor who feel that this is not the summary of the meeting, it's not a true reflection of what transpired in the meeting, They've got no platform to object to that because the media is already in. That thing Cyril was doing, I was in the NEC of the ANC. Zuma used to give, you know what the president of the ANC do? They come with a written political overview and they come with a written closing remarks. They come with two speeches. So you all speak, 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 speak. Then at the end they read that speech as if you never said anything. In that NEC where I was sitting, there was Tokyo Sowali. It was my job and Tokyo Sowali's job. When the president summarizes wrongly, Tokyo will call point of order in the NEC and say that is not the summary of our meeting. Balaga will say, Comrade Tokyo, the meeting is closed. The president said, no, 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 we can't allow that. We, not, we reopen that meeting and say this is not a true reflection of what happened. What the president said is not a true reflection of what happened in the NEC. And that is going to paralyze that organization. That is going to divide, further divide that organization. That's what led to Ngokai Tobi resigning in the Eastern Cape. That this is not what we agreed on. And I must now sit here with my right conscience and tell my people to go and vote for DA. When I know this was not a true reflection of the meeting. So, but that is their own internal problems. So all I'm saying is, it's not like this matter of the DA is enjoying the popular narrative even internally in the ANC. It's a lie. It's News 24. It's that foundation of the Oppenheimers, Brandest, that says, no, this is a popular view or the markets and all of that. We chose the markets. 
for 30 years. Look at us now. The president says, no, we have done this in 1994 under Madiba, and we can do the same. And look at us, we are able to neutralize these people. I said to him, no. Our anger today as the youth of South Africa is, you guys gave a lot in Cordesa and in 1994. The, the National Party came in, neutralized you, made you to adopt a constitution that is going to restrict you. When they knew they had you at the corner, they pulled out of the coalition. You are not going to ask me to repeat your mistake of 1994. I'm not coming to that past. And easy. Thank you. Thank you. I think we are done for tonight. Thank you, and we will see you all tomorrow at this very end. Thank you, President and officials.